What's up everybody, Eric here from Hardware for Gamers. M. Ayub asked if I could do a tutorial on how to overclock your CPU using offsets. So this is actually pretty good timing. I was planning, uh, I gave my daughter the Aorus M motherboard, the B450 Aorus M that is. Uh, and I haven't actually overclocked it yet, so I can actually take you guys through the process on how I actually overclock a CPU. Now the first thing I do is I run a test to tax the CPU, so I'm looking for temperatures, the actual voltage that the auto profile is using, uh, and to do this I use hardware monitor. So I'm going to be looking for the CPU vCore and the VID voltages. Um, now obviously these are on default right now and those are some very high voltages which is why you should typically not run on auto voltages. Uh, and then I take the package temperature of the CPU. Now this is only a Ryzen 5 1500X so that you're looking at four cores, eight threads. Um, I do have the Wraith Spire on here, so it's not the stock stealth cooler that would have come with this. I think the 1500 came with the stock, or the self stealth cooler. Uh, but anyways, I do have the Wraith Spire cooler on here. Uh, so temperature should be pretty good. I'm not going to be doing a, a huge overclock. I'm probably just going to be looking at like a 3.9 a gigahertz overclock. But first, we just want to figure out the temperatures. So I'm going to run this and then take a look at the temperatures after the fact. So I'll speed everything up, so don't worry. Max CPU temperature was at 74 degrees. The average or so was probably around the 71, 72 degrees. Um, the voltages were in around the 1.28 or so, uh, which now are just jumping around chaotically. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is restart the computer, which... And then you gotta uh, no do not delete or do not save. Let's close this up. Yeah, it's my daughter's computer. I'll say that again. Restart. And then smash that delete button. Here we are in the UEFI, and let's I guess start overclocking. Uh, so. On this motherboard, this is the way it's set up anyway, so depending on what motherboard you have, it's going to be slightly different, but the concept of offset overclocking is still going to be universal. The base understanding is that the motherboard will give you a, will have a specific voltage set, and then you're just going to be adding voltage to that already preset voltage or telling the motherboard to add voltage to that already preset voltage so okay for the i'm just going to set this to 100 so it's just hard set uh, i'm going to overclock to 3.8 gigahertz uh, so a multiplier of 38 because uh, i was looking at some of my old testing and the amount of voltage it takes for this chip to get to 3.9 gigahertz is just a little more than I'm willing to put in for an everyday overclock. Uh, so let's go to advanced setting, uh, advanced CPU settings. So the core clock is already set there. Performance boost. If you're overclocking, you should probably uh, make sure that's disabled if there is one. Cool and quiet, I keep on. Uh, 
I don't think it's really going to make too much of a difference. And then everything else here, that's just set to auto. It's auto or disabled, so keep SMT on auto. I'm not really sure on how that I would just would think it would be enabled or disabled, but that's how this motherboard sees it. So I'm going to also then have to overclock the memory because the memory profile is not on. But first, we want to make sure the CPU is stable before touching the memory. So let's go to advanced voltages. And OK, so we have on this motherboard. So 1.2 volts is the set voltage for this CPU on this motherboard. So what I'm going to do is I guess set it to zero. So that should then just keep it at 1.2. And then I'm going to hold down the plus button or you can actually type in the number. So you'd want to go point one two. So it'll give you a plus offset of 0.12 volts. The opposite, you can also go negative, which, so how would you type that? My note, that still goes down. So you just go point, can you actually type in a negative number here? Nope. Okay. So if you're wanting to underclock or undervolt your CPU rather, you need to start at zero and then physically hit the minus button and it will go down. Which if you're doing an H like a um, home theater PC, that's something you might want to do just to make sure the temperature is really nice and low and keeps the system nice and quiet. Uh, but if you're playing games and whatnot, you're probably going to want to have a positive for a plus offset. So I'm going to start with a 0.12 volt offset and then see where that gets us. I'm going to, I guess, leave the SOC voltage as auto for now. I'll probably come back and change that after. So let's save and then boot into Windows and then run Blender again. Okay, so here we are back in Windows. So the offset is then pretty much bringing the voltage up to 1.33 and the, where are we here? So yeah, the VID and the VDD is sitting in around 1.2324. Uh, so let's run your test again. Again, I'm using Blender. I definitely recommend using Blender, it's free. I guess I can leave a link in the description below for easy download. So I'm going to run this again and see if it's stable. If it finishes, you should be pretty good on your overclock. So if you go to run the test and it crashes very quickly, you might want to actually put up the voltage like two or three points. But again, that's pretty much all this is, is just playing with it up until you can actually get through the test. Now, I found that Blender is a very good test to use because it stresses the CPU so much and for a longer period of time over just something like Cinebench. Cinebench is like a two, three minute test. This is for this CPU, like a 20, 22 minute test. Gives you a much higher chance of finding an error you can also use A to 64. I have found that if, like I've ran tests for like 24 hours on A to 64, but then I run something in Blender and Blender crashes after like three, four minutes. So I do find that Blender is a better stability test, uh, at least for Ryzen processors and for memory, certainly for memory. So that's pretty much how you overclock using offset. It's the basic process is exactly the same as actually putting in a number. Uh, it's just that you don't actually get to put in a number. The base number is set and then you're just trying to add a little bit of voltage to that. Um, all in all, it's a much more straightforward way of doing things. 
So if this is your first time overclocking, it might be a decent way of doing it. Most motherboards have the option. You can either do an over, uh, an offset based off of a set voltage, or you can just set in your voltage if you know what you want to use. Okay, so that seemed to be stable. So what I'm gonna do is restart the computer and go back into the uh, UEFI and play around with a few other settings. Uh, I noticed that the exhaust fan is spinning incredibly slowly there, so I'm not sure what's going on there. So I'm gonna take a look at that as well. And I think I'm going to leave the voltages the way they are and I'm going to start playing with the memory. There we go. So let's go to the smart fan thing first. Exit and save, and then just jump back into the BIOS really quick. Okay, so let's go to memory settings, and then let's profile. That one. Okay, so that's pretty much all of that. So, XMP profile one is loaded. And yeah, so let's go save and then load back into Windows and then see if that's working. So I think that's pretty much all I got to say. If you like the video, you know what to do. Think about subscribing. And if you do, click that bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. And as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.